Hey everyone, it's James from dreamweavertutorial.co.uk and today we're going to be making a pure CSS drop down menu. It has a top level navigation hover in blue. It has a different hover link effect when it hovers over the links and the text changes color. And most importantly, it holds the blue hover effect while the mouse scrolls down the rest of the page links. As I said before, this is pure CSS. There's no JavaScript. So this will load instantly into your web browser without any delay. There's also no images being used either. All of the effects being used are just background colors, hexadecimal colors, and a text effect using CSS text shadows. Okay, so back in Dreamweaver, we're gonna create a blank HTML document. I'm gonna split the body tags and we're gonna create an all-encompassing div and it will be div ID and we'll call it wrapper. I'm gonna split that in the middle and we're gonna put a closing comment to so say it's the end of the wrapper div. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is create another div and this is going to hold the menu inside of it. So I'm going to create a div with an ID. I'm going to call it nav menu. And notice the capital M for nav menu there. And I'm also going to split that in the middle and I'm going to create a closing comment so it's the end of the nav menu div. Okay, so far so good. Now the horizontal menu itself is going to sit inside of an unordered list. And inside of that unordered list, we're also going to create a nested um, unordered list as well. And that will create the drop down effect. So I'm going to create an opening and closing UL tag. And I'm going to close it with an end main UL comment. Okay, so I'm going to create an opening and closing list item tag. And inside of that, we're going to nestle our other unordered list, which contains the invisible uh, drop down menu which when we hover over it will show up now inside the list item as well I'm going to put the main top level link this is going to be the link that's on show right so I'm going to create an opening and closing link tag so it'll be ahref equals and I am going to close that off and inside of that I'm going to make it a null link for now so I'm going to just put in a hash and I'm going to type the name of the link so this first link will be products you might want to call it home, you can call it whatever you want to. This is the what it's going to show up on the horizontal menu. Okay, we're now going to create the items that will appear on the drop down menu. So we've created the products link, which is on our main horizontal navigation bar. Now what we're going to do is nest an unordered list inside of the list tag. Notice the closing list tag, we're inside of that. Okay, so I'm going to call this end inner UL for the inside nested unordered list. And I'm going to create some list items for that. And inside each list item, I'm going to create an href tag and I'm going to put a name of the link that I want it to be. So I'm also going to create that as a null link with the hash there and I'm going to put link item. Okay, now what I'm going to do to save time is I am going to copy that link. So I'm going to highlight it, I'm going to press Ctrl C and then I'm going to press Ctrl V and copy and paste the link about four or five more times. So I'm going to press Ctrl V enter, control V, enter, control V, enter. Okay, so if I now go and press refresh or click inside of design view, you'll see that the list items appear, the link items appear just below that products section of the horizontal menu. Okay, so we're doing quite well here, so far so good. So this is what we've created, an unordered list, we've put a main horizontal list item and inside of that list item we've nestled an unord another unordered list. Okay, so let's create some CSS rules now. I'm going to highlight the nav menu and I'm going to create the new CSS rule. We're going to define it in a new style sheet. And I'm just going to save that into a CSS folder I created earlier. So you can save that into your CSS folder too. I'm going to call it drop down and uh, press save. Okay, now I'm going to press OK. We'll go in and hand code. So I'm going to go and click just to the right of the source code there into the CSS file we just created. Okay, so I'm going to go inside the nav menu and what we need to do is we need to take out all of the default margins and padding. So I'm going to type in margin colon zero, padding colon zero, and end those with semicolons. Okay, and uh, now we've got the nav menu, we need to take the margins and padding out of the unordered list. So I'm going to type in pound nav menu UL and I'm going to do exactly the same thing there. Okay, so now we've done that, I'm going to go and press refresh, we can click inside design view, you'll see that all of the link items snap into just into line, just underneath the products menu, and you can still see the faint outline of the list item bullets there, so we need to take the bullets out and we'll do that now. So I'm going to type in pound nav menu li, so it's the, the list items inside the unordered list, I'm going to change the margin to zero, I'm going to change the padding to zero. 
Okay, we'll take out the list style now. So list dash style, I'm going to type colon none and the semicolon on the end. And that will take out the list items. You just see them disappear there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to float the menu to the left or the list items to the left. So I'm going to type in float colon left and you see that they all swing up into place there and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set it to a position of relative so I'm going to type in position colon and relative semicolon and you'll see it puts a little box around them just lines them up into place there okay let's have a look at that inside of a browser so I'm going to click and look in Firefox and you see that links have been created they're not quite how we want them to be yet but we'll sort that out now we'll create a few more rules Okay, now the reason we created the list items as um, position relative is because we're going to absolutely position the links and uh, we need to something for it to buffer off. So in this case, it will be the list items. So now I'm going to adjust the links and this is where it's all going to happen. I'm going to type in pound nav menu ULLIA and we're going to align the text to the center. You'll see that it does that. Um, the other items it, the, the below the products, they've also changed, but we haven't set a width and height depth for it yet. So um, you'll see that they align center in the end. Now I'm going to type in font family. I'm going to change it to comic sans serif. And I'm going to set the text decoration to none because I want to take the underline out from the links. We don't want that there at all. Okay, so now we've done that. We're looking quite good now. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the height of each link to 30 pixels in height. I'm also going to adjust the width and a good size would be 150 pixels for a drop down menu. So um, that's a height of 30 pixels, a width of 150 pixels. Okay, so I'm going to display it block, which um, is the reason we put in the height and width. And you can see that it now takes up a 30 pixels height and a 150 pixels width for each link. So that means you don't have to roll over all of the text just to get the rollover effect. You can roll over anywhere within that box. Okay, so I'm going to center all of the text as well inside of that area. So I'm going to type in line dash height colon 30 pixels inside of the nav menu UL. Okay, you can see that centered it nicely there. Okay, I'm just going to adjust the color of the text links to black. So I'm going to type in color colon 000 semicolon. Okay, so let's just have a look at that in the browser now. So I'm going to have a look and check it in Safari this time. Okay, so we've done quite a bit to this text so far in the link. So we've taken the uh, list style items, the bullet lists out. We've taken the underlines out. We've uh, set the display to block and uh, we've also changed the font family. Now let's set the functionality that makes the drop down hover effects work. So I'm going to type in pound nav menu. I'm going to target the unordered list inside of the unordered list. So this is the nested list we're going to target. And I'll show you in the source code. We've got the main unordered list there. Okay, and uh, we're going to target the unordered list, which is inside of the unordered list. This is the nested list. That's why we're typing pound nav menu ul ul. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the positioning of the nested list, the unordered list inside of the unordered list, to position of absolute. So I'm going to type in position colon absolute and click refresh or uh, click inside of design view. You'll see that it, all of the list items drop down below the products list. And uh, now we're going to type the visibility. So I'm going to type in visibility colon. I'm going to set that to hidden because we want to hide that unordered list. So when I press refresh now, you'll see that it disappears. Fantastic. Okay, so all we've got now is the, the list item of products which is visible. So I'm going to set the top position to 30 pixels, which is the same height as the links that we set in when we displayed them block. That's important. Right, now we need to create a hover effect which will bring back that unordered list when we roll over the products menu. So I'm going to type in pound nav menu ULLI colon hover ul so we're going to adjust the hover of the unordered list inside the list item of the unordered list okay so that's a pseudo selector we're going to create there it seems a bit confusing but just bear with me okay we're going to type the visibility and we're going to change it to visible so when we roll over the uh, products menu the um, menu is going to show up the list items menu is going to show up with a visibility okay so let's hover over that now Okay, fantastic. That's looking really good. It's all in position just where we want it to be. Okay, so what we need to do is we can create some more list items um, which will make up the rest of our horizontal menu. 